Everywhere you look, art and architecture is adding another dimension to our world. Some becomes loved, some fades away, and some is hated. The French artists and architects fought for the Eiffel Tower to be pulled down. New York's Statue of Liberty almost ended up in Egypt. And in Australia, the Sydney Opera House created so much outrage, it nearly wasn't built. In 1979, when Melbournians didn't engage with this sculpture, they dubbed it the Yellow Peril, and it was banished to the scrap heap. But actually what I really like about it is the degree to which it kind of uh, punctuated the, the public perception of what art is and what public art is, that, that somehow it turned, it, it produced that debate. When Matthew Johnson helped design this building in Trinity St Kilda, it ended up in a court battle led by the local mayor. People are afraid of any change or any statements that are made in a bold way outside of the norm because it, make, it forces people to actually have to think about it. Developers and councils are often even required to spend part of their budget on art. The results of sometimes being curious, sometimes inspirational, while some, thankfully, never eventuated. Some, like this sculpture in the tiny seaside village of Flinders, is so hated, there's a plan to pull it down. I, they probably think we're terribly ungrateful. Um, the fact that it's, it was just imposed upon us from above, there was duplicity from the very, very beginning. I would describe it as a piece of um, carpet underfelt, um, but it does look like something you might see on the side of the road. Not only do most of the community hate the sculpture, there was outrage when they discovered it was far from unique. Um, I found uh, at least 31 examples of the sculptures. They're just done in multiples. So. I hope it's not there when you come back. <laughs> Yet in the tiny town of Brim, when an artist was invited to paint their disused wheat silos, everyone loved the result. When the small town of Fenella decided to cover the whole of their town in street art, a little persuasion was needed. People were complaining about getting our buildings vandalised and graffitied, and the council was wasting a lot of money on this ridiculous uh, idea. I thought they were mad. I've got to say that. Whether you love it or hate it, public art is part of our world. It's not a necessity like food or water, but if you think about a world without art, you know, it's not necessarily the kind of world you want to occupy.